baseline of masculinity as a whole is the thing that makes a good man a man is that he does what he doesn't want to do. He doesn't want to work and he works anyway. He doesn't want to go to war and he fights anyway. He doesn't want to get up, he gets up anyway. That's the whole point of it. We didn't want to die in the Titanic. Guess what happened? We died in the Titanic. Andrew Tate loses his appeal, but gets a high powered attorney. We break down the latest in the social media star's criminal case. Romanian lawyer Stefan Loredan comes on to break it down. Welcome to Sidebar, presented by Law and Crime. I'm Jesse Weber. Well, we have some new updates for you in the ongoing case of Andrew Tate, the social media star and former kickboxer, his brother Tristan, and two women were arrested in late December on suspicions of human trafficking and rape charges. Prosecutors allege the defendants, quote, created an organized crime group with the purpose of recruiting, housing, and exploiting women by forcing them to create pornographic content meant to be seen on specialized websites for a cost. Now, they've described how there are six alleged victims here. These are people who were, quote, sexually exploited and that, quote, an injured person was forced on two different occasions by a suspect through the exercise of physical violence and psychological pressure to have s sexual relations. Serious allegations here, but there are constantly new developments, and that's what we want to talk about right now. So you know who I'm going to bring in. I'm going to bring back in Romanian lawyer Stefan Lordan, who's been helping us sort through all of these foreign legal issues with us. Stefan, good to see you again. Thanks for taking the time. Thanks for having me. I'm disappointed we didn't get the white shirt. I mean, I thought there was a consistency there, but we got you in the black shirt. Totally fine. We're going to move. We're going to power through this. So, Stefan, you got it right. You called it. You predicted it. You said that Andrew Tate was going to lose his next appeal, and he has. So just to give everybody an idea about what I'm talking about, Tate lost his appeal challenging a second 30-day jail extension. Yeah. See, when they were arrested in late December, the court agreed to keep the defendants locked up for 30 days. Tate appealed it. He lost that. A second extension was ordered by the judge to last till February 27th. Tate appealed that, and it has since been denied. It has most recently been denied. You called it. What's your reaction? Again, I'm not surprised, and I would say I have a logical thinking behind the reasoning because um, it's very rare that uh, such appeals are being accepted, first of all. And then second, it's just the fact that given that the case is very mediatized, I don't know how it's called, but it's like there's a lot of news media attention right on the case. Um, the judge do doesn't want to make a mistake, so that's why. And just let's be clear, they haven't been formally charged with any crimes. Right now, they are being detained pending the outcome of this investigation, which you and I have spoke about, could last to 180 days. Um, we know, as we previously reported, that there was this document that was released that uh, got the sign off from the judge, which basically said uh, the reason there's this continued detainment is the, the, the defendants represent particular the particular dangerousness of the defendants with an increased vulnerability in search of better life opportunities that they uh, they can identify, excuse me, they can identify victims that have an increased vulnerability. So there's a need to keep them detained. Uh, but just to make it clear, is this case different from any other cases or is it typical operating procedure for people to be detained pending the outcome of an investigation? Yes, yeah, so I would say how the case has unfolded so far it's typical to how a case unfolds in the Romanian legal system. I feel like, and I know that the judge and the prosecutor has followed line by line the text of law, and they've been following the Romanian regulations. And so that's pretty much it. Yeah. Okay, well, this is the new turn. The new turn is that Tina Glandian, who is a renowned United States attorney, she's represented Chris Brown, Mike Tyson, she is now representing the Tate brothers, okay? She said, quote, in a uh, uh, news conference before the judge's ruling on uh, denying the appeal, the defense team made extensive legal arguments pointing out the lack of evidence against the Tate brothers. It's no secret that the Tate brothers are controversial public personas, but this is not about their public persona. This is about the violation of international human rights and the due process of law. So far, the system has failed. The Tate brothers, who are both U.S. citizens, have been in jail for over 30 days now without bail and without any charges filed against them. Let's first start off what you make of her comments. Well, first of all, I think that she doesn't know the Romanian law 
because she says that uh, they didn't have the bail option. But if if, if he, she would only read the law, she would understand that in such cases, when they are facing charges related to crimes that have intention behind them, the law states very clearly that there's no bail option, right? So I think she doesn't have any jurisdiction and she knows it. And even when she came into the courtroom, she was not allowed to speak because she's not allowed to practice in Romania, first of all. The only thing she did, from my understanding, was to counsel and to offer consul- consultancy to her clients. But that that's where the, her um, abilities were limited, right? And uh, her jurisdiction was limited. And I would say that overall, this is doing more bad than... I, I mean, I understand from Tate's brother's perspective, when you are you have so much money, you are trying every way is possible to try to get you out, right? Which also involves like bringing in high class, um, high profile lawyers from an international level. But this this doesn't make any, um, this doesn't have any effect in the course of the investigation and in, in, in front of the judge, in my opinion. If not, it's making things worse but because right now, a high profile attorney from USA or from an international level coming to a Romanian court in front of the judge and making claims publicly that uh, all the system has failed, the system is corrupt, uh, they are being detained uh, without um, having a legal base behind it, it's only making things worse for them, right? Because right now it's the legal system for Romania that is fighting, uh, I would say, the news media and the, um, how do you say it, like the notorious attorney from the USA. Okay, well, and, and by the way, so she is going seemingly or is about to go on a public tour. She actually spoke to Piers Morgan uh, on Talk TV. This is a huge injustice the way we see it. They should not be detained at this point. We think it's now crossed over to the point where it's violating international human rights law because the deprivation of of your lip- liberty pre-trial is the most severe form of punishment a state can impose. And that's what they've done in this case. The question that I have now is, and, and this is the question I have now, because she's coming in and she's a high-powered attorney, there is this international spotlight now put on the Romanian judicial system, which I didn't know anything about. A lot of people didn't know anything about. If the pressure comes, is that going to have an effect on Romanian authorities? No, no. I think it, it will make things worse because, again, they will be more careful and they can't fail because right now a failure for the Romanian system will mean a huge failure for them as a whole, right? If they would just say right now, okay, you were right, we will just set them free, we didn't have any evidence, we didn't have anything. Can you imagine how bad it will make Romania look on an international level? So this build-up pressure, I'm, this is at least this is my opinion, this build-up pressure that is building right now is making things worse for them and I don't see them uh, being set free very soon. Why do you think she was hired then? Again, I think a desperate man is doing every means possible in order to get himself out of jail, especially when you have money. You would think that bringing in such people, like powerful people, very well know that. Because let's face it, I think the reason why they brought her is that she was the attorney of uh, Chris Brown and some other celebrities, right? And so they were thinking that maybe they could put pressure on the legal system, but that, that's not, not how it works because <clears throat> the legal system in Romania is impartial and they can't just, um, they can just uh, default uh, based on pressure, right? If that makes sense. Like they can just, I don't know how was the term, but uh, they can just crack based on, on media pressure. What happens... And I'm, I'm assuming we might be in a situation where this extension happens every 30 days, every 30 day inter- inter- increment. They're just going to be uh, uh, locked up. Two questions. Do you think Romanian authorities between now and the end of 180 days are going to show some proof that they have against uh, the Tate brothers and the two other women? Are they going to show anything to say, hey, guys, listen, listen, we have something. Here's an example. Or and let me ask you this. What happens if at the end of 180 days? They don't have enough to bring charges. Okay, so I will tell you what I think it, it's going to happen. First of all, I don't think it's going to go for 180 days. I think the prosecutor, uh, what he's doing right now during the investigation phase, he wants to keep them under arrest during the investigation phase and then move the case to the trial. Uh, and if they, he moves the case to the trial, they're, they're going to be kept in the prison anyway. So I don't think that he's willing to set them free. Uh, I don't think the period 
during the investigation time, I don't think the period of the arrest will be 180 days. I think it will be shorter than this. And he is going to move the case to the trial. What we need to understand is that when the prosecutor decides to move the case to the trial, he needs to present the case file to another judge, which is a pre preliminary chamber judge. And the judge will decide if there is enough evidence to send it to another judge in another instance that will, um, will just uh, go over the trial, right? So I will make a video on my YouTube channel about how the legal system works in Romania because it's, it's different levels. There are different judges. It's a little bit different from what you are used to in USA. It's very interesting. I would say that it's adapted from the, uh, from the legal system in France, but I would say it's very, uh, very complex. And from the moment the suspect gets into the investigation phase to the end where, when he's convicted, the case files and everything goes to like at least 12 people that take decisions like judges and, and so on, right? And so it's very impartial, in my opinion. It's very fair. How, how do charges, how are charges officially brought? Are they officially brought? What what exactly you mean? Like right now, if they are facing charges? Oh, oh yeah. So 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 what I mean so what I mean by that is right. They they haven't officially been charged with a specific crime, right? I mean, you tell me. It's more the investigation. How does it work in terms of them being officially charged with crimes? Yeah. So right now, in the investigation phase, they are facing charges, but they are not convicted yet. Once it will move to the trial, then they are going to be judged for the crimes that they supposedly commit. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, so let, let, let's just go back to, to her for a second, Tina Glennon. You're saying she has no authority to speak on behalf of the Tate brothers in a Romanian court. She has no authority in Romania. She's just more of, I would say, like you mentioned, consulting them and maybe advising them on, on what do you think, the, the, the court of public opinion? Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Again, if you will watch the news, you will see that uh, they even stated that she didn't, she was not allowed to speak directly to the court. The only thing she was allowed to do was to offer consultant uh, consultancy to their her clients. And, and let me ask you this: Do you think any international human rights body is going to get involved in this case? No, and I'm going to tell you why. Because so far, from what I know and from what I've seen and from the information that has been available to the public. The judge and the prosecutor and the overall the legal system has respected point on point the whole procedure and everything um, that is stated in the law. Right? So there's nothing that they've done wrong, in my opinion. The fact that they have bad prison conditions is another story. Right. You, you and I talked about that. You and I talked about how the conditions in Romanian jail are, like Andrew Tate says, they're not great. Um, I, I do want to follow. I want to end this with one final thing. So. When uh, Andrew Tate was being escorted out of a, a van and into um, uh, into the building, uh, he was handcuffed. And I believe one of the reporters had asked him, uh, are you going to sue? Are you innocent? Okay. You're right. You know I'm innocent. Are you confident you're going to be There's not much justice in Romania. Does Andrew Tate have any legal recourse against Romanian authorities? Deter, like, do, can he sue the Romanian government? Can he sue the prosecutor for anything that's happening here? Yes, only if he's going to be found not guilty, right? So if the investigation ends and everything ends and he's not going to face any charges and he's going to not be found guilty, then he can sue the Romanian. But as the time of the investigation right now, I don't think he stands any chance in my opinion. Has anybody ever done that before? Not from my knowledge, not when you are convicted or when you are facing charges related to such crimes. Because there are multiple ones, right? It's not like only one of it. It's like human trafficking, uh, rape. Uh, it will be very soon probably money laundering. Uh, there's uh, establishment of an organized criminal group. Uh, and, and trust me, they at least have like three, four more charges that they can. And I feel like they will bring in at least two more charges along the way. You will see it. It's just that they are gathering more evidence right now. But 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 let's say um, it, let's say he's uh, let's say charges are brought um, and he's not convicted. Um, you're saying he could file a lawsuit uh, in Romania against Romanian authorities, or if charges are never brought and he's just detained for 180 days. I mean, in these two scenarios, he he could he could sue the Romanian government. Have you ever seen anybody do that in that situation? Not talking about people who've been convicted. But people who have been maybe wrong, you know, never charged or never convicted, have they ever done that in Romania? Uh, to be honest with you, I haven't heard of any. 
uh, on the when it comes to, comes to the criminal law. I know when it comes to the civil law, such things happen. Okay. Okay. Hey, listen, Stefan, I appreciate you taking the time. Uh, there's always new developments in this case, and we're going to see how it ultimately progresses. Stefan Loredan, thanks so much. You're welcome. And that's all we have for you here on Sidebar, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. Please subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Jesse Weber. I'll speak to you next time.